Welcome everyone to our morning worship and prayer. This is our time to gather together and magnify the goodness of God. I want us to know that as we're facing so much issues around us all over the globe, I want us to know that our faith is in direct proportion to our understanding of who God is. If we want to see God as someone who oversees us, who's watching over us, I'd like us to have a greater view of who he, who he is in our lives. And one of them is His transcendence, His power, His nature that is beyond this material world. We'll talk more about that, but as, as we come this morning, let's just magnify Him as somebody who's faithful and is in that we are in covenant relationship with Him. And He hears us and He's watching over us. Let's sing right now. In your presence, armies fall. In my weakness, you are strong. In darkness you go before I will not fear when you call me out Lord, you command The angels to stand Watch over Watch over me. You are faithful, never failing. You are steadfast, unchanging. When I call, you will answer. Oh, my God, in whom? trust in your shadow I am brave unafraid in your dwelling place and in the face of my enemies I stand secure you deliver me, yes. Lord, you command the angels to stand. Watch over me, watch over me. You are faithful, never failing. You are steadfast, unchanging. When I call, you will answer. Oh my God, in whom I trust, you are you overcame oh god you are my refuge i rest beneath your wings i'm safe in the shelter of my king i know that you will save me when i call upon your name no harm will overcame 
overtake me cause you overcame oh god you are my refuge i rest beneath your wings i'm safe in the shelter of my king i know that you will save me when i call upon your name no harm will overtake me you overcame oh god we declare we rest beneath your wings we're safe in the shelter of our king i know that you'll save me when i call upon your name no harm will overtake me cause you overcame oh god you are my refuge i rest beneath your wings i'm safe in the shelter of my king cause you are faithful never failing you are steadfast unchanging when i call you will answer oh my god in whom i trust you are faithful you are faithful never failing you are steadfast unchanging when I call you will answer oh my God in whom I trust oh my God in whom I trust oh my God in whom I trust. Trust in the name of my God. I take refuge in you, my Jesus. My refuge and my strength. It's amazing to be worshiping God and just magnifying who He is. And sometimes we don't have a grasp of His nature and His capability uh, to love on us uh, um, unless we dig deeper into His scriptures. That's why my, my exhortation to everyone, as we've been doing this for almost a year now, that this will be a teaser for us to continue to dig into the Word of God. This morning prayer and worship is just almost like a crumb, uh, crumbs. Um, just uh, something that is a token, a teaser of what God has prepared for us through His Word. I'd like to read a passage of a scripture in Hebrews chapter 1. i am personally been going through Hebrews right now and I'm now in chapter 6 as I meditate on His Word daily. But I want to look at verse 3 of chapter 1, which we see in here the beauty of God. And the author of Hebrews didn't even have the time to introduce himself. He wanted us to know who God is right away in his introduction. No time to introduce himself. In fact, we don't even know who wrote Hebrews up to today, it's always a debate. But thanks be to God, because the author was able to fulfill his purpose in writing this letter, which is to introduce who God is to you and I. Let me read verse 3. Starting in the later part of verse 2, and it says here, Through whom also he created the world. Verse 3, he is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature. He upholds the universe by the word of His power. 
after making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. This is the word of the Lord for us this morning. I'd like to go through uh, this short passage of scripture right on the uh, right in uh, the introduction of the author. And I'd like to dissect it for us <clears throat> so that we can appreciate the word of God and be able to embrace it and be able to run in this life, having all these challenges, but hoping that we will reach the finish line at the end of the day. Now, here are uh, some of the uh, reasons why we can say God is transcendent. Uh, you know, here are uh, God's attributes, and one of the attributes that God has is His transcendence. When we say transcendent of uh, transcendent God, we're talking about Him beyond His nature and His powers beyond this material world. He has something that is in store for us that is beyond our capacity to even understand. But we have been given the scriptures just for us to have a glimpse of the transcendence of God. And in this short passage of the scripture, we will see the following reasons why God is transcendent. The first one is found in right on verse 3. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature. We're talking about Christ. That Christ is the complete representative of God here on earth. So the first reason why we can say God is transcendent is because He is a divine revealer. Christ is divine revealer and Christ exactly represents God to us. He's a divine revealer. Christ himself has revealed. You want to know who God is? Then, if you're looking at Christ, you're seeing the very representative of God here on earth. The scripture says, nobody can look at God and live. And yet, he sent his representative to us. He is the radiance of the glory of God in the exact imprint of his nature. There have been situations in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament where people had a glimpse of the radiance of the glory of God. And we remember the shepherds during Christmas where they had a glimpse of heaven. We remember uh, the three disciples when they were brought to the mountain and had a, a transfiguration of Christ. And we remember Stephen at the height of the persecution when he was being stoned to death. He had the view of heaven. <laughs> Those are the radiance and the glory of God. And yet, the Lord has brought that radiance and glory in a way that mankind could comprehend and is no other than Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, a lot of philosophers uh, couldn't accept that fact that God has become man in Christ Jesus. They couldn't think of that fact because God or Logos can only be understood through the intellect, according to at least uh, Philo. And, and we all know Plato himself couldn't believe that God could become a, a, in a material uh, uh, body because of the uh, philosophy that he had upheld, which is dualism. There's a separation between the two. It can't be, it, it can't cross over. And yet, the Logos and the God of the universe had become man in Christ Jesus. And Jesus became the divine revealer. Christ is the exact representative of God to you and I. That's an amazing uh, perspective that I'd like us to always realize that truly Christ represented God to us. And the second part of this is found in and the later part of verse 2 and the, and, the, and, and the later part of verse 3, the se uh, middle part of verse 3. And I want to combine it together. It says in the uh, later part of verse 2, Through whom all He created the world. Could you imagine? Through Christ, He created the world. Then in verse 3, the second part, 
and He upholds the universe by the word of His power. What are we talking about? Christ is not only divine reveal, revealer, He represents exactly God is to us, but He's also life sustainer. That Christ powerfully upholds created things for His purpose. And that's who God is. He did not only create the universe through His Son. The Bible says, and, 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 and God said, let there be light. He has spoken through the Word. We all know that the Word is Christ. And, the word, and, and, and there was light when He said, let there be light. Christ uh, powerfully upholds, not only created. I like, I like what it says there. He created the world. The word world in verse 2, the later part of verse 2, does not mean just the material world. It's talking about eons in Greek, in English, eons, which means ages. Or in our perspective, perspective it's history. In other words, we, we know that History itself is the creation of God Himself. Yes, God is a God of history. History is His story. Yes, even human history, or maybe you can even call it cosmological history, whatever you may want to call it. But it's in charge of eons of history, not just of the material universe. That's what makes Him transcendent. That's why we can rely on Him. Because God is not panicking when things in the material world are getting messed up. Because He created it, and not only that He created it, He's able to sustain it in order for the world and the universe and you and I be able to fulfill what God has purposed us to be. That's an amazing thought. No wonder why Romans chapter 8, 28 says that we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. At the end of the day, no matter how messed up the world has become, the will and the purpose of God will still prevail on this earth. That's how transcendent He is. The third part that we need to embrace. At the end of verse 3, he says this. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Not that, you know, some people had this perspective of God as someone who is beyond reach. That he is so beyond our reach that he would never, never interact with us. But we all know that they had, it had been debunked. That mindset had been debunked. 2,000 years ago, God became man in Christ Jesus. Not only that He can fellowship with us and meet with us and be like one of us and live like, like, like us here on earth, being tempted, tempted. Not only that, but He was able to fulfill the very purpose why He came, which is, the forgiveness of man's sin to save us from the wrath to come. He didn't only accomplish that, he completely accomplished that. In verse 3 he says, And he sat down right at the right hand of the majesty on high. In other words, as soon as he sat down at the majesty on high, and when he died on the cross, he was buried, he rose again from the dead, and he ascended and sat down at the right hand of the Father. You know what he was saying? Job is done. Priests in the Bible couldn't sit down <laughs> because the job will never be finished. There's only one person in the entire universe who finished it. In fact, to prove it, writer of the Hebrews says, he sat down at the right hand of God. No wonder why he's transcendent. Not only that He's transcended, and to prove His transcendence, He loved on us. He set us free from the wages of sin, from the wrath that is about to come, because the wages of sin is death and hell. And yet He came to rescue us. That's how much He loves us. You know, I, I don't have anything more to say, but to end this word for us. 
the God who is in charge of history, showed us His redeeming love through His story. The God who is the maker of history, who is transcendent, is even the God who showed us His redeeming love by purifying us of our sins, seated at the right hand of the Father, which is showing us His love story. God bless you. I'd like us to come and worship God again. And when we sing this song, I want you to have that perspective of God who is transcendent and yet very much concerned about you and I. I want us to sing this chorus again. I know that you will save me when I call upon your name. No harm will overtake me cause you overcame. Oh God, you are my refuge. I rest beneath your wings. I'm safe in the shelter of my King. I know that you will save me when I call upon your name No harm will overtake me Cause you overcame Oh God, you are my refuge I rest beneath your wings I'm safe in the shelter of my King I know that you will save me When I call upon no harm will overtake me, cause you overcame. God, you are my refuge, I rest beneath your wings. I'm safe in the shelter of my King, cause you are faithful, never failing. You are steadfast unchanging when I call you will answer oh my God in whom I trust you are faithful never failing you are steadfast unchanging In whom I trust, oh my God, in whom I trust, oh my God, in whom I trust. I don't know about you, but I have been enjoying our morning prayer and, and, and worship together with this word. I hope this would encourage you all the more to dig into the scriptures and continue to love on God. I'm just glad to know that I'm part of God's love story. I want to pray for us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.